Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ blessed. This is 15 Minutes with the Captains. I am Captain Amaziah. With me today I have Officer Yuri. Today we have Officer Yuri with us. Okay, today's topic, brothers and sisters, we're going to smash another lie. We're going to smash the lie of you can be a sovereign or you have Moorish sovereignty. You can go make up your own driver's license. You can make up your own passport. You can... um. Uh, uh, don't pay your taxes, things of that nature. We're going to get into all of that right now. Let's go to the definition of the word sovereign. Sovereign, a supreme ruler. A what? Supreme ruler. <laughs> There's no man, no Israelite man in this land here, in any land that's there scattered in, that is a supreme ruler. But to be sovereign is to be a supreme ruler, right? There's more? Especially a monarch. Especially a monarch, a kingdom. Possessing supreme or ultimate power. Possessing supreme or ultimate power. Right now in captivity, we ain't got that power, brother. So you cannot be a sovereign. You are not a sovereign. There's more? No, sir. Go to the word sovereignty. So that's the, that's the definition of the word sovereign. A supreme ruler. Okay, let's go to the word sovereignty. Sovereignty. Supreme power or authority. Do we have that sovereignty now? No. The authority of a state to govern itself or another state. Do we have that authority to govern ourselves in America, in South America, North America, Central America, and when we're, 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 we're spread across the globe? No, we don't have that authority right now. So we cannot be a, we're not a sovereignty. We don't have our own military. We don't have our own currency. We don't even have our own flag. And the, and the flags that you made up, what nation has that flag defeated? What country, has, what war has that flag won to be a sovereign? Where is it? I'd like to know. So no, you are not a sovereign just because you, you, you claim you, can't, you don't pay no taxes. No. Okay? Now, let's go to Baruch chapter 4 and verse 6. We're going to go to the Apocrypha to see what happened to us. Let's go. Baruch chapter 4 verse 6. Ye were sold to the nations. What did the Bible say? Ye were sold to the nations. The Bible says to those sovereign, so-called sovereign brothers and sisters, you were sold to the nations, okay? Were we sold? Yes, it's called the Atlantic slave trade. It's called the sub-Saharan slave trade where we were sold to the Arabs. What about the Chinese slave trade where we were sold to the Chinese, okay? Where we built the, the, the wall of China. Okay, so you were not a sovereign. Go ahead. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. It was not for your destruction, brothers and sisters, why we were sold. Read. But because ye moved God to wrath. We moved our God to wrath. Read. Ye were delivered unto the enemy. You were delivered unto your enemies. If you're delivered unto somebody, how the hell you become a sovereign? Just because you got some paperwork? Read. For ye provoked him that made you. By sacrificing unto devils. What did, what did you sovereign brothers do? Sacrificing unto devils Read. and not to God. You were we would start a sacrifice doing after the other nation's gods, okay? Now, let's go to Lamentations 5 and 1. Let's go to the book of Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 1. Let's see a little more about you so-called. So, so let's see some of you sovereign brothers and sisters history. Read. Lamentations chapter 5 verse 1. Remember, O Lord. What has come upon us? Uh -huh. Consider and behold our reproach. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance. Our inheritance. Is turned to strangers. The Bible says our inheritance. What was our inheritance? Our land. North America, South, this Western Hemisphere was given to us as an inheritance to the, to the ten tribes, okay? What happened? Here comes the other nations now. Here comes Esau. Here comes the Spaniards, the French, the English, the Dutch, the Portuguese. And destroyed you off of that land. Destroyed our forefathers. Okay? We were not sovereign when they came. After they came, we were not sovereign anymore. I'll say it like that. Read. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Read. Our houses to aliens. So the aliens, the real illegal aliens, is the so-called white man. The Spaniards, the Dutch, the Portuguese, the English. Those are the illegal aliens. But they call you the illegal alien. Why you think you are sovereign. Read. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Read. We have drunken our water for money. What did the Bible say? We have drunken our water for money. Now we got bills on top of bills on top of bills. You so sovereign, but you got a phone bill. 
You so sovereign, but you got a water bill. You so sovereign, but you got an electric bill. Read. Our wood is sold unto us. In other words, all your resources now, your wood, your water, your minerals. You don't own those minerals on this land that you was persecuted off of. Okay? So, you no, know, you're not a sovereign. How are you going to be a sovereign when you, when you drive your car on American roads? Okay? You are not a sovereign. You don't have an airline to get out the country, your own airline to get out the country with your, with your fake passport, when you make up a fake passport. Okay? You don't have that. Let's go. Our necks are under persecution. Your necks are, our necks as a nation, whether you call yourself a sovereign or not, whether you think you got some, 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 uh, um, some knowledge of the laws of this land or not, your necks are under persecution, whether you're a sovereign or not. Whether you know all the penal codes, whether you know all the constitution, your necks, your, your necks are under persecution here. Go ahead. That's what the Bible says. We labor and have no rest. We have no rest. Let's go to Matthews. No, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Let's get a little more history about how we, we left our sovereignty. How about that? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Read. Therefore... Shalt thou serve thine enemies? God said we're going to serve our enemies as a nation. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. God sent this man against you. Read. In hunger. In hunger for food. We don't own our, we don't own this land here. We pay taxes on this land here where we get food from. The majority of our food is GMO. All kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, um, food that don't benefit our bodies is here. Okay. So for food. We got to serve our enemies. Read. And in thirst. For water. We pay that water bill like we read it in Lamentations 5 and 4. Okay? For, for water. To drink water. We got to serve our enemies. Read. And in nakedness. For clothes. All our clothes. We got to serve our enemies now. We don't produce n none of these clothes. Our clothes are made in Korea. Or made in China. Or made in some sweat box in Mexico. Okay? It's not made in the hoods of America by our people. Read. And in want of all things. In what? In want of all things. The Bible says you're going to be in want of all things in this land here for breaking God's laws, brothers and sisters. You're going to, guess what? In order for you to be a sovereign, you got to sign some paperwork right. with Esau. Wait a minute. If you're so sovereign, why did you have to go and get paperwork to sign with Esau to begin with? If you're so damn sovereign. Why did you have to go to your enemy to be a, to be a sovereign? If you're so sovereign, you're so free. Read it. Read on. So and it says, for in want of all things. So in want of that freedom <laughs> or that sovereignty with Esau, you had to go to Esau. You had to go to your enemies and serve your enemies. You had to write up documents and all that. And say, hey, according to penal code, this, that, and the third, I'm a sovereign. I've been on this land before you. I'm a Moorish American. No, 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 no. And we're going to get into that, about those sovereignty, about the, that paperwork. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Did that happen? Yes. Now, I want you to read this about that sovereignty, about those, um, that paperwork with Esau. Let's go. U.S. Native American treaties. U.S. and Native American treaties. Let's see what it says. About when America, Babylon the Great, excuse me, Mystery Babylon the Great, America, the United States, had treaties with the tribes here, with the Native American tribes here. Gad, Reuben, Ephraim, Manasseh, and all of them. Go ahead. From 1778 to 1871, the United States government, the United States government, Babylon the Great, Mystery, entered into more than 500 treaties with the Native American tribes. Do you hear what, do you hear what that says? America in how, how many years? Just over about 91 years, 92 years. What happened? They entered into over 500 treaties with the native tribes. Read. All of these treaties have since been violated. <laughs> wow. So wait a minute. The native tribes had treaties, had paperwork with America. And what happened? All of these treaties have since been violated in some way or outright broken by the U.S. government. You hear what, the, you hear what the, the Wikipedia says? They broke them all. They broke them all. You keep, if you want to keep reading it. Yes, sir. 
while at least one treaty was violated or broken by Native American tribes. So the, the, the Native tribes broke one. America broke every single treaty. And you want to do paperwork with America. How smart are you? Let's go to Sirach 12 and 10. Let's see what the Bible says about that. So you got to go to your enemy and, and, and negotiate with your enemy to get your freedom. For the one of all things, brothers and sisters. Let's go. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. Did the native tribes trust their enemy and go into agreement with them with paperwork? Yes. Are you doing the same thing and calling yourself a sovereign? Yes. Read it again. Never trust thine enemy. Read. Why? For like as iron rusted. As iron rusted. You could get WD-40, put on iron, make it look all nice and shiny, right? You could do that with iron, right? So is his wickedness. But guess what? His wickedness is still going to show through that WD-40. That rust still going to show through that. Let's go to Lamentations 4.18. No, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 25. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Hear what the Bible says. The Lord's going to cause you to be, to be smitten. Your head's going to be bowed down. Your spirit's going to be broken by your enemies. Read. Thou shalt go out one way against them. You try to fight against them in, in the civil, uh, uh, as the Black Panthers, as disorganization, the Black Liberation Movement, the AIM Movement. And what shall happen? And flee seven ways before them. And now we flee seven. Now we're totally subdued in America. We're so subdued, we put down all, all types of armory and say, Here, Esau, let's just go get paper. How about that? Here's my document. Uh, can I be a sovereign now? Can I be free now, please? Meanwhile, he owns every stitch of land here and has paper for every stitch of land here. That he will reverence, and that paper, his own paper, he'll respect. Is he respecting some Negro's paperwork who, who, whose daddies was in slavery under his daddies? No, they're not going to respect it. Keep going. It shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So now you're removed into all, we're removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And do you really think they're going to respect your little paperwork? No. Jump to verse 30. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie no, no. with her. G give me 31. Verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Your sovereign ox, your sovereign food shall be slain before your eyes. Read. And thou shalt not eat thereof. You ain't getting it. It's going to your enemy. Read. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. What's this talking about? Here go your reparations right here. You ain't getting none. We're not getting it in this land. You can't get and the, no amount of paperwork going to get you that, that, that reparation. Read. And shall not be restored to thee. And what? And shall not be restored to thee. Your land, our land is not going to be restored to us. Our resource is not going to be restored to us. Our sovereignty is not going to be restored to us in this land. That's what God said. Read. And thou shalt have none to rescue them. Hear what the Bible said? None's going to rescue them or you out of the position that God put you in. God put us in this position to be under our enemies until we repent. We can't go around that, brothers and sisters. Lamentations 4, 18. Lamentations 4 and 18. Lamentation, chapter two. Lamentation, chapter four, verse eighteen. They hunt our steps. The Bible says they hunt out in this land here. Our steps are hunted. Whether you got your little ID, your little Moorish ID on you, that you're a sovereign or not. Read that we cannot go in our streets. Just like what's the young man's name? Which one? Trayvon Martin. He his steps was hunted. Read. Our end is near. Uh huh. Our days are fulfilled. For our end is come. Now, give me Matthew 17, 24. Now, let's go to Christ. What did Christ say about who is a sovereign, who is not? Who's free, who is not? Let's see what the Messiah says. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, uh -huh. they that received tribute money came to Peter. Uh-oh. They that received tribute money, the tax collectors. That's what tribute is, tax. Read. And said. Doeth not your master pay tribute? So here come the tax collector to, to Peter. Don't your, don't your master pay taxes? Read. He saith, yes. Yeah, he pays taxes. 
And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Simon, what you think? Go ahead. Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? So, Christ says to Peter, Whom do the rulers of the world collect taxes from? Read. Of their own children? Do they collect taxes of their own family? Or of strangers? Or of the royal family? Or of strangers? Or of peasants? Or of tributaries? Let's see what Peter says. Peter saith unto him. No, nah, not, to, to, not to the royal family, but to the strangers, to, the, to the, the poor, the working class. Read. Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him. What did Christ say? Then are the children free. <laughs> now you know who's, got, who's sovereign, brothers and sisters. That's who's sovereign. Then are the children free. When you ain't paying taxes, then you're a sovereign. Then are you free. To, you got your own land. When you're on that royal family, then you're free. When you pass laws and, and, and things of that nature, then, and you dictate to other people what's going on, and you have the authority to govern yourself, then are you free. Let's go to Romans 13 and 1. Let's keep the ball rolling. Romans 13 and 1. Romans chapter three. 13, verse 1. Let every soul... Be subject unto the higher powers. What did it say? Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. Read. For there is no power but of God. God set this kingdom up. Read. The powers that be are ordained of God. Simple. The powers that be are, uh, or are ordained of God. Read. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power. Whosoever resisteth that power that's set up. You want to get your little paperwork and you want to argue with the cops about this and that when they stop you on the street. Resisteth the ordinance of God. God set this man up. Read. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You're going to get judgment from the Lord. Okay? The Lord's going to put the spirit on this, this evil devil cop to put a bullet in your behind or, do, or, or violate you in some other way. Okay? Read. For rulers are not a terror to good work. You know what the Bible says? Rulers are not a terror to those keeping God's laws. Read. But to the evil. To the who? To the evil. Hold that. Give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. We're coming right back. It says, rulers are not a terror to good works, brothers and sisters. That's very key. Okay? Because do we like what the cops do to our brothers and sisters at, at, as uh, um, on this land here? No, we do not. However, judgment is of the Lord. Let's go. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment. Whoso does what? Keepeth the commandment. Whoso doeth good. Shall feel no evil thing. That's what the Bible says, brothers and sisters. Go back. Go back now. Now read it again. Romans chapter 13, verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, uh -huh. but to the evil. But to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of don't, the power? Don't, shouldn't you be afraid of the power that's set up in this land by God? Read. Do that which is good. Keep God's laws. And thou shalt have praise of the same. And they're going to leave you alone. Jump to verse 7. Verse 7. Render therefore to, to all their dues. Do what? Render therefore to all no, no, their no, dues. Verse six. Verse six. For for this cause pay ye tribute also. What did the Bible say? For for this cause. For this cause. Pay ye tribute also. For this cause pay ye tribute also. Pay your taxes. Don't do like Wesley Snipes and Lauren Hill. Don't do like them. You're gonna end up in jail. Read. For they are God's ministers. Read. Attending continually upon this very thing. Read. Render therefore to all their dues. Uh huh. Tribute to whom tribute is due. If we're in this land, brothers and sisters, sorry to tell you, you gotta pay your taxes. Read. Custom to whom custom. Read. Fear to whom fear. Read. Honor to whom honor. Read. Owe no man anything. Do what? Owe no man anything. Don't owe your taxes, you're gonna end up in jail. Read. But to love one another. But to love one another. For he that. Let's talk about our people. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Well, praise it. Jump to Isaiah 30 and 1. Isaiah 30 and 1. So why do our people come with paperwork uh, trying to, trying to um, uh, uh, get out of the captivity that we're in using paperwork? Let's find out. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, the Bible the says, Woe to the destruction to the rebellious of our people. Go ahead. That take counsel. We take counsel. But not of me. We take counsel from other men that say, oh, you don't have to pay your taxes. 
You don't have to do this. There's no, there's no gold backing the dollar bill. You don't have, we can't use a dollar bill no more. There's no gold back in it. Stop being foolish. Read. In that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. You don't cover the covering of the Lord. Because the Lord said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Go ahead. That they may add sin to sin. What's the point, brother? That they may add sin to sin. That's the point why we do these paperwork, trying to be Moorish American, trying to be a sovereign in the land of our captivity, while we're still paying bills. Okay? If you're a sovereign, you shouldn't be paying no bills. Everything should be free in this land here. Okay? If you're a sovereign, if you're a sovereign, you should, you should be able to drive and run every traffic light on this land here. Why don't you do that? Let me see you do that. Let's go to 2 Samuel 8 and 1. Now we're going to get an example of a sovereign. 2 Samuel 8 and 1 through 2. 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. And after this, it came to pass. 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. And after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methagam, Methagamma, out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured, he, he too put to death. Uh -huh. And with one full line to keep alive. Uh -huh. And so the Moabites became David's servants. And brought gifts. And the, and the Moabites did what? Became David's servants. David had servants under him. He had men that he, he had a nation under him that he governed called Moab, which is the Chinese today. Read. And brought gifts. And they, they paid tribute. Now, jump to verse 5. Verse 5. Six. And when the Syrians of Damascus. Now, let's see about the Syrians. Came to Sikor, had a desert, king of Zobah. David slew of the Syrians. Two and twenty thousand men. Now, this is a man of the Lord right here in Acts 14, 22. You can read about David. They, God said, he's a man after my own heart. And David was slaying nations. He slayed the other nations. He, right here, he killed twenty and twenty-two thousand men. Read. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus. David put forts in Syria of Damascus. David put his military base in Damascus, in Syria of Damascus. That's when you're a sovereign. You, America has their military bases all over this earth in different lands, in different nations' lands. That's when you're a sovereign. Read. Show me, show me Africa's military bases in America. Show me Syria's military bases in America. Show me your military. Where's your military base if you're a sovereign? Where's it at? Where's your currency? Where's your money? Where's your military might? Read. And the Syrians became servants to David. And the Syrians became tributaries, servants, slaves to David. Read. And brought gifts. Read. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. Go to verse 14 through 15 now. Verse 14. And he put garrisons in Edom. He put those same military bases in Edom. Throughout all Edom put uh -huh. he garrisons. Uh -huh. And all they of Edom became David's servants. Read. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. Read. And David reigned over all Israel. And David reigned over all Israel. Not only the other nations that he conquered, but over all Israel. And David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. That is an example, brothers, of when you will be, so when you are sovereign. You have servants. You have men and nations bringing tributary unto you. You govern people. Now, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 3. Now, let's see, where does sovereignty come from? Let's say if you could will yourself to be a sovereign. Well, let's see what the Lord says. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. For power for authority is given you of the Lord. Read. And sovereignty from the highest. You see what the Bible says, brothers and sisters? Sovereignty comes from God. God is the one that sets up sovereignty. Who's a sovereign? Who's not? Read. Who shall try your works and search out your counsel. You see what the Bible says? God is the one that determines who's a sovereign and who's not. Let's go to John 8.32. John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. The Bible says 
You're going to know the truth, brothers and sisters. The truth is God's laws. You're going to know the truth. You're going to know God's laws. You're going to know repentance. You're going to change your mindset and begin following God's laws. You can read about that in Psalms 119 and verse 142. Read. And the truth. And God's laws shall make you free. That's what's going to make you a sovereign, brothers and sisters. And with that, Israel, I'm Captain Amaziah. Officer Yuri. And we say shalom. Shalom. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.